Hey guys, welcome to another exotic encounter adventure. Are you guys ready for some cuteness today? I decided today was going to be all about the cute. Okay, now when we think of cute animals, what do you guys think of? Do you think of a dog, maybe a cat, maybe a bunny? Well, I'm going to take a little bit of an exotic route on the cuteness. Today, I'm going to introduce you to probably the world's softest animal. Are you guys ready for all this cuteness that you're about to see? Because it's a lot of cute. Okay, here she comes. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? This is Miss Minnie and she is a chinchilla. A chinchilla is one of the world's softest, cuddliest animals. They're so soft, in fact, that there are lots of people that make fur coats out of them because of how soft and fluffy they are. Look how cute she is. Now they come from the Andes Mountains and it is cold a lot of the times there. So that's why they have all of this thick, cuddly, warm fur to keep them nice and cozy. But have you seen her feet? Look at those feet. Those feet are pretty amazing because they can jump from the ground as tall as here, five feet in the air. They live on a mountain. So they have to be able to jump and get around on that mountain. Now, what do you think she likes to eat? Do you think she likes to eat bugs? Do you, oh, Victoria, what does she have some Schmitz on her? <laughs> do you think they like to eat chicken? What do you think that they like to eat? Oh, I'm gonna give you a hint. Victoria's gonna hand them to me. Now, this is a snack a lot of us like to eat when we're kids. They come in a cute little red box. Except my chinchillas are a little bougie. They like it a little fancy. They like to eat raisins. Here, Miss Minnie. She's like, oh yeah, give me that raisin. Look how cute they are. They love dried foods. They eat hay and grass. They like to eat dried bananas, you know, like banana chips. They love their raisins. That's definitely their favorite thing in the whole wide world to eat is raisins. What's cool about this animal is, you know, there's lots of people that can't have pets because they're allergic to them. But a chinchilla is one of the furriest critters on the planet that nobody's allergic to. Isn't that amazing? Now, she does have very, very sharp, sharp teeth. And in fact, just like our friends, the bunny and our friends, the guinea pig, their teeth just keep growing and growing and growing. Now, she doesn't want her teeth to get too long because if they do, then she can't eat. So a lot of the times in the wild, you'll find them chewing on wood or even on rocks. I think Miss Minnie wants another raisin, Victoria. We might have to give her another one. Let's see. Here you go, sweet girl. Yeah, she loves those raisins. So, you know, it's very, very cold where they live. So they have to stay warm and they have to stay dry. Think about it. What do you think they do? If it snows and they go out and play in the snow, I know that when I was a kid and I go out and play in the snow, I had my boots and my scarf and my hat and my mittens and sometimes even snow pants, but I'd still come home wet and cold. Now, if they get wet, what happens to their fur if it gets wet and they live where it's freezing? It freezes. So I'll tell you in a little bit what they would have to do. Now, as soft as she is, and she is super, super soft, you know, she is very well protective from things like fleas and ticks because her fur is so thick and I am pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. I'm really having a hard time getting down to where her skin is. It's so thick that fleas and ticks can't find the skin. Now, did you guys happen to see her bushy tail? Look at that cute, adorable tail. Now, if you ever wanted to know what a squirrel's tail feels like, well, this is what it feels like if you ever get a chance to touch a chinchilla's tail. Now, her tail is very different from the rest of her body. And there's a very gross, disgusting, good reason for that. Do you guys want to know what it is? Are you sure? Moms might not want to know. <laughs> so chinchillas, to protect themselves from animals, predators that would be coming after them, they can do two things. First, they can let go of fur. You know, 
I had three chinchillas here at Exotic Encounters, and because they're so requested for birthday parties, yes, we come to your house for birthday parties, kiddos. So you gotta let mom and dad know if you want uh, Exotic Encounters at your birthday, they have to call us, and our phone number is at the end of the video. But I had done a show once with my moose. His name is Moose, he's my gray chinchilla, and he's so sweet, and the little boy was petting him. So nice at this show, it was a camp show. But Moose was not enjoying being pet. And that's not like Moose at all. Moose loves to be cuddled and pet. Moose was trying to get away. He was squeaking. He was wiggling around. And we couldn't understand why. And it turned out as the little boy was petting Moose so nicely, the little boy had what's called a seizure where he lost control of his body. And he grabbed Moose really tight. Moose did not want to get hurt. So Moose let go of a lot of the fur on the side of his body. Now, if you live where it's cold, is it good to have a big bald spot on the side of your body? Nope, nope, nope. So they don't do that a lot. That's a last ditch effort to stay alive. Now I did say what happens if they get wet? Are you still thinking about that? I want you to keep thinking about that because they don't want to freeze. The other thing that they can do to protect themselves, like I said, has to do with their tail. Now, I have only seen this happen once in my whole life. If something is coming after Miss Minnie, she's going to try to run away. But if she knows she can't outrun this animal, this predator that's after her, are you ready, guys? She's going to raise her tail up. That is a chinchilla booty right there. That's its butt. And what they do is they actually shoot out pee right into the eyes of the animal that's trying to catch them, which temporarily blinds that animal so she can get away. Now, have you given thought to what I said about what happens if she gets wet? Well, follow me, guys. Here we go. Are you guys ready? So she will go and she will go into a cave and find dry land. And here she goes. She will dig and dig and dig and then she'll roll around in it. Let's see if we can get her to do that. Right now, she's a little bit excited. Nope, she doesn't want to. We'll try one more time. Ms. Minnie, there she goes. She's digging and she rolls around in it. <laughs> and that helps to dry her off so she stays dry. It makes her kind of dusty. Look how cute she is. Okay, so. I have another really cute animal for you guys to meet. Now, this was the furry one. You're going to meet someone now that's very, very different. This, you guys, is Poppy. And Poppy is my hairless rat. She has no hair. She's naked. <laughs> you know, and I think that they make excellent pets. I do have three rats. Two of them don't have any hair and one of them has loads of hair. Look how cute. I think she's so darn cute, you guys. She's a little rascally girl. Now, why do you think they have animals now with no hair? Because I've seen hairless guinea pigs and I've seen hairless rats and I've seen hairless cats now. Think about that. Why are they having animals now with no hair? And there is a really good answer to that. Hi, little Poppy. She likes to climb on my shoulders and cuddle in with her mommy. So they have animals now with no hair because like I said before, there are people that can't have pets because they have allergies. They're allergic to the hair. But if they have no hair, then they can't be allergic to them. Now, little Poppy here, I have to be very careful with her because she has no hair. You know, when she and her sisters are playing and they're climbing all over each other, you know, Poppy has no hair to protect her skin so she can get scratched just from her sisters climbing on her. We just, I have to order Poppy a sweater for the winter to keep her a little bit warmer, but we give them lots of cuddly, soft things to cuddle into so they stay warm. And because she is hairless and she wants to stay warmer than her sister that has fur, she has to eat more food than her sister. Hi, Miss Poppy. Yes, I love you too. I think these guys are awesome little pets. We also have to make sure that they don't stay out in the sun because we don't want them to get a sunburn. And I know a lot of people think that they're creepy, but everybody that's met Poppy at the shows, because I have brought her to a couple of birthday parties and we've done a couple of school programs because we visit schools too. As soon as they touched her and they feel how soft she is, they absolutely fall in love with her. Look how cute she is. She's saying hello to you guys. So I hope you guys have been enjoying the animals so far. What do you guys think? Last question. 
poppy eats. I know a lot of people think cheese because they think of mice and rats, but Poppy eats seeds and nuts. She likes cereals, not sugary cereals, but like she likes Cheerios. She likes strawberries. She likes to eat cantaloupe. Look how cute she is. She loves to hang out with her mommy. Oh, and I have to be careful. She does like to chew on my jewelry. <laughs> These guys are such little fun animals. Look how cute she is. So thank you for enjoy, enjoying our little encounter today and stopping by and visiting your library site today. I know that the library has lots of amazing books about animals that I bet you, you guys would enjoy. Like, let me see. Oh, like dragons love tacos, right? Ask your librarian to tell you all the different cool books that they have about animals. And I will see you next time for our next animal encounter with exotic encounters. Bye guys.